Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Dan Shkirkoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about my week 3 hidden gems for the 2024 fantasy football season. Now, over the course of today's episode, I'm going to be talking about players at a variety of different positions, players that you may consider to be sleepers, but I like to call them my hidden gems going into the week based on everyone's favorite cinematic universe. Now, these are players that either first and foremost don't have a high roster ship percentage or potentially don't have a high start percentage going into the given week, players who can immediately make an impact and help you capture a victory in week 3. After we talk about these six players, Players, I'll transition into talking about my favorite pickums via underdog this weekend. So for those of you who want to go ahead and skip over to that, you can travel down to the description, find the timestamps down there, subscribe, click the like button. If you have not yet already, thank you very much for all the support. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with the first hidden gem of the week. It is Cam Akers. Now, last week we had Zach Charbonnet in this overall position within the Soul Stone because every single week the Soul Stone requires a sacrifice, specifically a sacrifice in the form of a player that has gone down with an injury. And in this certain week, we have Joe Mixon who is expected not to play going into Sunday's game against the Minnesota Vikings. He's already designated doubtful, did not practice at all this week. On top of that, Damian Pierce, the initial RB2 of the Houston Texans, is also dealing with a hamstring injury. He has already been designated out. That leaves Cam Makers to have the full workload of this Houston Texans backfield, which is giving their running backs a lot of opportunity. Thus far this season, as it currently stands, Cam Makers is only rostered in 23% of Yahoo leagues. That should be 100% because, again, if you have Mixon, you should be looking to play Cam, Cam Makers in his stead while he is out. Now, in terms of the overall opportunities that Cam Makers is going to have available to him, we're talking about in week one, the running backs of the Houston Texans, 33 rushing attempts and four targets. In week two, 18 rushing attempts and eight targets. There's a lot of opportunity on board here. And even though we're going to see Derek Gumbawale get himself a little bit of utilization within the receiving game, Cam Akers has proven in the past that he is certainly a capable three down back. Even in this last week's game, once we did in fact see Joe Mixon go down with his ankle injury, we saw Cam Akers come into the game, seven rushing attempts for 32 rushing yards, one target, one reception, and three receiving yards. Once the Houston Texans offense gives him all of the opportunity of this backfield, he is going to be an immediate impact player and hopefully lead us to the promise line of capturing a victory in week three in the absence of Joe Mixon. Taking on the Minnesota Vikings isn't the easiest overall matchup, but based on rushing statistics isolated, Thus far this season, the Minnesota Vikings from weeks one through two are allowing 10.25 fantasy points per game just based off of rushing yards and rushing touchdowns allowed to opposing running backs, allowing 4.14 yards per carry. This is an automatic play in my mind and a perfect hidden gem for the week. Now, before we continue again, like I mentioned earlier, at the end of today's episode, I'll be putting together a couple pick em slips via Underdog Fantasy. Perhaps Cam Makers will be among them. For those of you guys who haven't yet already, be sure to travel down to the description and check out Underdog Fantasy at this current moment in time. If you sign up using my code, use code Andrew today, making a first-time deposit minimum of $10 not only gets you the first-time deposit offer, but you'll get my rankings every single Sunday morning for the remainder of the season. These rankings are by position, by tier, half PPR, full PPR, all-encompassing rankings in order to help you capture a victory every single Sunday and hopefully a 2024 fantasy football championship so if you go ahead and check out the map to the right side of the screen and in fact you are eligible based on your location and haven't used the code in the past take advantage of the opportunity today if in fact you aren't eligible all these rankings are available via my patreon link also down in the description thank you very much okay let's move on to the second hidden gem of the week it is juan jennings because the reality of the situation with the reality stone is that as it currently stands, juan jennings is only rostered in 22 percent of yahoo leagues and additionally this offense has all of their receivers injured. Debo Samuel out for this week. Christian McCaffrey on the injured reserve. George Kittle is expected not to play due to the late week hamstring injury that has popped up. So with Ayuk, Mason, and Juwan Jennings as the primary carries of this offense, it is really going to be on the shoulders of all three of those options to have themselves incredible weeks in order to defeat the Los Angeles Rams. Now, that being said, Kyle Shanahan has an incredible track record against the Los Angeles Rams in the last nine regular season games, excluding last season's week 18, where we had Carson Wentz taking on Sam Darnold. Kyle Shanahan has a record of 9-0 in the last nine games against Sean McVay and the Rams in the regular season. So Jawan Jennings should be on a path of finding himself a lot of opportunity, of course, because of the absence of Debo and George Kittle and McCaffrey, and hopefully a lot of fantasy success. Over the course of the last couple seasons, 2022 to 2024, in the seven games in which Jawan Jennings has been given five or more targets, he's averaging 9.87 half PPR fantasy points per game. And when we take into account the fact that the Los Angeles Rams secondary has played awful thus far this season, thus far this season from weeks one through two, opposing wide receivers are averaging 28.3 fantasy points per game. That's the 10th best matchup at the position. Brandon Ayuk and Jawan Jennings should be implicated for a lot of potential targets and a lot of utilization because outside of running the ball with you know, Jordan Mason, really there's no other pass catchers. There's no backup tight end that we can immediately trust within this offense in a matchup in which of 
course, if the secondary is going to be their biggest issue, hopefully Jawan Jennings is going to get that opportunity because of the rapport he has already built with Brock Purdy over the course of the last couple seasons. Now, if in fact Brandon Ayuk doesn't step up to the plate and have himself an incredible performance, obviously because he missed all of training camp, this would open up a lot of opportunity for Jawan Jennings to get into that top 36 conversation at the wide receiver position. All right, moving on to our power stone of the week. Like I mentioned every week, when we talk about the power stone in specific, it's typically a power back. Last week, we had you know J.K. Dobbins, who added himself an incredible performance, and here comes Zamir White. In the same overall construct, we are playing a running back against the Carolina Panthers. Last week was J.K. Dobbins. This week, it'll be Zamir White. Now, even though Zamir White hasn't found much success in fantasy football thus far this season, again, the first two weeks, He's played 38% and 63% of the overall snaps, has been given 15 and 12 touches, but only has been able to produce in a half PPR, 3.6 and 5.3 fantasy points. Thus far this season, only averaging 3.09 yards per carry, while in 2023, at the back four games of the season, was averaging 4.73, but now has an opportunity to get back on track. Obviously, the last two matchups against the Los Angeles Chargers and Baltimore Ravens have been difficult matchups for this offense and definitely for Zamir White. But this is an opportunity for him to get back on track. A player that currently is only being started in 30% of Yahoo leagues. The expectation taken on the Carolina Panthers, who are allowing quite literally 25.65 fantasy points per game based on just rushing statistics isolated. The last two weeks, the New Orleans Saints and Los Angeles Chargers running backs have accumulated 68 rushing attempts for 333 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns against the Carolina Panthers run stop defense, which is quite literally non-existent. We're expecting Zimmer White to get back on track, be given the ample opportunity he deserves, and finally be fantasy relevant in 2024. All right, moving on to the Space Stone. Now, last week's Space Stone tanked out didn't live up to the overall hype in which I elevated him to. But the Space Stone is typically a player that is going to reach the moon. And the player that I believe is capable of doing so is Adam Thielen. Because of the quarterback change within the Carolina Panthers offense, I think there's an opportunity for every single receiving threat within that offense to be fantasy relevant to an extent. Whether it is Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, Xavier Leggett, there is an opportunity that each of those three wide receivers could be relevant within the given week under the assumption that Andy Dalton comes out and plays like a gunslinger. And that's what the expectation is. I mean, the last time we saw Andy Dalton in 2023 started in the absence of Bryce Young because Bryce Young was dealing with an injury. Week three against the Seattle Seahawks last season was you know, lighting it up, had over 50 passing attempts. In that overall effort, we did see a guy like Adam Thielen get 14 targets, 11 receptions, 145 receiving yards, a receiving touchdown and 26 fantasy points in a half PPR scoring format. As it currently stands, Adam Thielen has like a 25% roster ship percentage and only 4% of leagues are starting Adam Thielen on Yahoo Fantasy. I think that the rapport that they have already built as two veterans within the league, whether it was last season or thus far this season, is only going to help Adam Thielen and his fantasy upside going into the given week. Last week, Adam Thielen you know, played 94% of the overall snaps, was open on a vast majority of his overall routes that he ran, but unfortunately, Bryce Young not able to get the ball in his direction on a consistent basis. Adam Thielen's a wide receiver that last season proved to all of us that he could be fantasy relevant even at his you know, older age. In 2023, from weeks 2 through 11, was averaging 10.5 targets, 8.2 receptions, 79.3 receiving yards, 0.44 receiving touchdowns, and 15 fantasy points per game with Bryce Young. So just putting that into perspective with Andy Dalton now being named the starting quarterback of this offense, there is an expectation that Dave Canales is going to try to put up as many points as possible in order to keep his Carolina Panthers as competitive as possible, and Adam Thielen is the key to, to accomplishing that. Moving on to the time stone. We've had to give it a little bit of time for Jake Ferguson to return from his injury, but it is finally time to put him back in our starting lineups. He is currently only being started in 34% of Yahoo leagues, which I believe is a complete mistake. He needs to be started, especially because of the upcoming matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. Thus far this season, the Baltimore Ravens have allowed the second most receptions to opposing tight ends. Not only that, they've allowed the third most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends in a half PPR, 13.0 on a per week basis. Last week, Brock Bowers. The week before, of course, the amalgamation of Travis Kelsey and, of course, whatever other tight ends they had in that offense. Thus far this season, again, the Baltimore Ravens have struggled covering the tight end position. So the expectation is that Jake Ferguson, in a game in which the Cowboys need a bounce back performance after getting completely slaughtered and buzzsawed by the New Orleans Saints, Obviously, Dak Prescott needs another weapon and not throwing the ball to Jalen Tolbert 10 plus times per game. Hopefully, Jake Ferguson immediately joins in this offense coming off of a full practice on Friday. The expectation is that he is fully healthy and ready to go. And that is why he is suiting up going into the given week. And of course, not only that, this is implicated to be the third highest scoring matchup within the week. Hopefully, it's a shootout that leads to far more target upside for Jake Ferguson. All right, moving on to the final player I wanted to mention is Jordan Whittington of the LA Rams. Now, Jordan Whittington starting is definitely something that is a long shot because there are 
definitely better options and safer options, especially going into this week. But I just wanted to go ahead and throw out a name there. Cursed with knowledge. I think that Jordan Whittington has an opportunity based on the fact that Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup are both out dealing with injuries that he could in fact be the Puka Nakua Cooper Cup role within this offense. Because last week, once Cooper Cup went down with his injury, Jordan Whittington entered the game, ran 14 routes. Nine of those routes were ran out of the slot position. So if they're going to utilize him in that role, he has an opportunity as a rookie wide receiver to come in and technically, I don't want to say be the next Puka Nakua of this offense because obviously it's very much so out of the realm of possibility that he's going to get himself a high volume of opportunity in that sort of sense. I mean, last season, week two against the San Francisco 49ers, Puka Nakua had 20 targets for 15 receptions and 147 receiving yards. I don't think Jordan Whittington is capable of accomplishing that because not very many receivers are capable of getting that kind of volume of opportunity. But if in fact he is going to be in that, you know, Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua role, he's going to find himself open and within mismatches that he could take advantage of. I mean, if there's ever going to be an opportunity for another wide receiver within this offense to step up in the absence of these players, it is Jordan Whittington. Yes, Demarcus Robinson presents a lot of opportunity in terms of the deep ball, but outside of that, if we're going to potentially grab a wide receiver from this offense, throw it on our bench just to see if we could have a pop-off performance and then maybe Jordan Whittington could have value for the remainder of the season, this would be the week to do so. I mean, thus far this season, the San Francisco 49ers have been destroyed by opposing slot receiving options. Thus far in the first two weeks, have allowed 17 targets, 15 receptions, 232 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown to opposing slot receivers. So if Jordan Whittington is up for the task on hand, then of course, Matthew Safford's going to be throwing the ball in his direction a lot. Now, I understand tempting the potential of starting him is very risky, but perhaps we'll go ahead and use him within an underdog pick him going forward now speaking of let's go ahead and transition into talking about some underdog pickums going into the week based on the last couple weeks of results as to what i've suggested and how it's panned out now starting in week one i did in fact mention this as my favorite player of the week it did end up hitting should have hit for way more because christian mccaffrey was unfortunately inactive but either way it paid out with the two legs of cj shroud and gary wilson going into week two i thought okay i'm just going to continue the momentum of playing you know thousand dollar slips and unfortunately i got caught by Alvin Kamara not completing the higher than three and a half receptions, which was absolutely brutal because everything else panned out as it was supposed to. But what I did not anticipate to see was that the same, you know, the Saints were going to blow out the Dallas Cowboys, even though the Cowboys were what, like minus six and a half favorites. Everything was pointing to a game script in which the Saints would have to go ahead and throw the ball in the second half. But that absolutely did not happen as they scored 35 points in the first half. Nonetheless, we're going to continue to learn from these and hopefully put together the best potential slip possible, which we're going to go ahead and do right now via Underdog Fantasy. All right, so as you can see, we travel on over to Underdog Fantasy. Again, if you guys are interested, there's a link down in the description signing up today using code Andrew. Making that first time deposit minimum of $10 will get you my rankings, but you can also go ahead and put together some pick'em slips. There's obviously the free play going into this weekend of 0.5 total yards with CeeDee Lamb. There's the gimme pick that I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of right now. Just to give you some context, you can quite literally take any singular you know, play and make the number zero. So I'm going to take advantage of this and I'm going to max it out at the $1,000 max going into this weekend by putting together two specific plays. Now, the player that I like the most as it currently stands in regards to a potential pick'em slip is higher on Devon A. Chance, three and a half receptions. Now, the reason why I feel so confident about this over potential, overall potential play is because the research that I've done regarding it. First and foremost, over the course of the last two weeks, of course, Devon A. Chance has played out of his mind. And even though we're going to be in the absence of Tua Tungabailoa, Devon Achan is still going to be in this offense and is still going to be the engine of this offense. And the fact that we are going to be trending in a direction in which Raheem Mostert is once again going to be inactive, we already heard from Mike McDaniel, the head coach of this team. He is quite pessimistic on the status of Raheem Mostert. He's doubtful. He's probably not going to play. And even if he does, a very limited role. So if we go ahead and take into account that it's going to be Devon A. Chan and only Devon A. Chan with a couple sprinkles of maybe Jeff Wilson or Jalen Wright, but ultimately Devon A. Chan carrying this backfield in a potential negative game script against the Seattle Seahawks, because of course they have Skylar Thompson as their starting quarterback. We have to take into account that Devon A. Chan over the course of the last two weeks has ran 47 routes total, 23 of which have been out wide or in the slot. So of course they're moving around all the formation and has had 14 total targets for 14 receptions and 145 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown, seven targets, seven receptions in each of the last two games, a 30% target rate thus far, which is an unbelievable number. Again, last season amongst all wide receivers, 
Tyreek Hill was number one with a 36% target rate. I mean, that was the highest number that I had seen in the last decade. The fact that Devon HN is 30 plus percent within this overall category is incredible. Now, you may be worried about Skylar Thompson, but don't worry because what we have seen over the course of the last couple seasons with Skylar Thompson is that he likes to immediately throw the ball to his checkdowns. Last week, as soon as he came into the game, completed four passes in the direction of Devon Achan for 48 receiving yards. So if we're going to be in a situation where Skylar Thompson's going to be the lead quarterback and in a negative game script, he'll have to throw the ball for majority of the second half. In the last three games in which Skylar Thompson has played, going back to 2022, the wild card game against the Buffalo Bills, he targeted his running backs nine times. You go back to the game against the Jets in week 18, targeted them four times. In both of those games, the running backs had four or more receptions. Additionally, going back to 2022, week five against the Jets, 10 targets to his running backs, four receptions. Again, the opportunities are certainly going to be there. And I absolutely am all in on the idea of Devon HM within this overall status. Now, to go ahead and complete this overall play, I'm going to go ahead and just take any quarterback, really could be any player, because I'm going to attach the gimme play. So the reason why I'm doing this is, let's say, for example, Patrick Mahomes. We'll take higher on this number. But in this circumstance, which again, there's only what, eight hours available on this. So once I live stream on Friday night, for those of you who tune in, you're going to obviously get a glimpse of what this exactly means. Once I apply this, it applies it to any token. So it takes Patrick Mahomes, it takes his total passing yards to 0.0. .0. So as long as he gets one yard, it's good to go. So basically, I make a $1,000 slip here, turn it to 2,700. All we need to have is quite literally Patrick Mahomes breathe on the football and Devon Achan finish his overall task on hand, which is three and a half receptions or higher than three and a half receptions, which again, I truly believe he is capable of based on the fact that it's a 0.91 potential entry leads to believing that again, this is going to be one that most likely hits. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead, play this overall pick, confirm that overall selection. And there it is. We'll leave it as such. But I also wanted to go ahead and without doing my, you know, $1,000 entries that I do every single week, I also want to go ahead and put together a couple pick'em slips in regards to players that I like. Like, obviously, I want to take care of or take advantage of this overall play. Now, the next player that I want to go ahead and implement within this overall play would be Saquon Barkley, specifically rushing touchdown or receiving touchdown anytime, mainly because I like the matchup. It is expected to be the second highest scoring matchup within the given week. And additionally, you have vulture protection on underdog fantasy in which if, in fact, he gets a rushing touch, you know, touchdown stolen from him by Jalen Hurts, you go ahead and, and clear the play and you get your money back and you're good to go. So then if we go ahead and talk about my favorite wide receiver of the week, perhaps the player like Jamar Chase, honestly, I think he's going to have himself a dominant performance. Therefore, we'll take him scoring a receiving touchdown. And the final player that I wanted to mention is a guy like Brandon Ayuk. Because again, even though I believe that Juwan Jennings is going to find himself in abundance of success, I also believe that there is a high potential in which Brandon Ayuk could put together a great performance and hopefully find himself you know, getting over 72 and a half receiving yards. Mainly because again, the last two weeks, we've seen Janus, Jamison Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. both accumulate over 120 receiving yards. I think 72.5 is certainly capable. I mean, whether that's an 8.76 multiplier, $10 minimum entry or maximum entry, mainly because of the CD land play, but $10 for 87. I think this is one that I'm certainly willing to go ahead and go after. Um, if, in fact, you feel a little bit sketchy about the potential touchdown play of Jamar Chase, you could change that to receiving yards or receiving touchdowns totally up to your prerogative as to whether or not you feel comfortable or again because there are so many you know potential plays on underdog fantasy just looking at them right now there are so many plays with so many players you can even go to a specific player for example let's travel over to anthony richardson there's 21 total picks that you can make for him so go ahead check this out today i'm going to go ahead and put together this play as the second favorite play going into the given week take advantage of the 0.5 total yards which every customer can Again, check out Underdog Fantasy, guys. Thank you very much. And that's pretty much going to cover it. I will go ahead and potentially talk more pick'em slips as a live stream over the course of the next couple of days. But outside of that, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for all the support. If you guys haven't yet already, subscribe to the channel because we are, again, posting videos regards to waiver wire targets, trade targets, you know, wide receiver, running back, tight end, quarterback rankings, hidden gems. Of course, live streaming every day for the remainder of the season. So if you have any questions, be sure to swing on by. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys. Peace. <laughs>